Well, today we have something quite interesting to look at. This is E, a privacy respecting and open source Android ROM. And we're going to be taking a look at it right now on Linux Lounge. Indeed, this is a bit of a first for the channel. We're taking a look at our first Android ROM. Uh, now this is running on a uh, Nexus 5 and um, for anyone interested this version of Android is actually based off Android Nugget although I believe there are newer builds for newer devices although pretty much everything is the same across Android versions so whatever device you install this on you're going to have pretty much the same experience and there are a lot of officially supported devices if you do want to give this a look but um, first things first you might ask what is E? Well, essentially, it's a Android ROM developed by the E Foundation, and it's designed to be privacy respecting and open source. Additionally, E has their own cloud services that you can join that somewhat replace Google's own cloud services. You know, you've got um, well, it's all based off Nextcloud, so if you know what that is, you know pretty much what you're getting into. But um, essentially, you know, you get file storage, notes, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, you know, you've got a nice Android ROM and a nice cloud service. But uh, for now, we're just going to be talking about the Android ROM, which we have right here. Um, so first impressions upon installing this Android ROM, it looks very nice. It's got kind of an iOS thing going on. As you can see, you can swipe between your app pages. It's all very smooth, even on an older device. Um, you can swipe up and search things. You can even make folders. And uh, you've got this very nice blur effect on everything. Um, like this is probably one of the best looking Android experiences out of the box I've ever seen Although when we start going into the apps the design is a little bit inconsistent I would say because of course the apps look like material apps and this home screen looks a bit iOS But that's fine. It all looks very nice anyway And uh, the first thing you might notice is this is a totally open source and privacy respecting ROM And as such there is no Google or anything like that to be seen fantastic um However, you can absolutely use this ROM to do, you know, whatever it is you would want to do with your phone. So uh, let's have a look at some of the apps you get by default. Um, so starting from the top, you get the E App Store. Now this is very interesting. Essentially what this is, is it's kind of E's own App Store. Um, you know, you've got all the apps that you could possibly want, both proprietary and open source, as you can see. Um, it's a very nice looking app store, but I would be a little bit cautious about using it um, It's a little bit sketchy. I'm not really sure where they're sourcing these apps from apparently it's from a place called APK pure now According to the site they are verified with a hash which shows they're the same as the ones on Google Play so theoretically there shouldn't be any malware and then definitely shouldn't be in any of the open source apps because those come straight from F-Droid via their own kind of API. However, if you're on the cautious side, I would maybe not use this and instead use F-Droid. But that's just kind of my uh, view of it. So continuing on, you get a bog standard calculator, a calendar based off a program called ETAR, which is a open source calendar app. Notably, they're not using the default lineage one, uh, which is what this ROM is based off. Um, but it's own it's kind of you know its own open source calendar thing. You've got a clock app, which is just the standard Android one. You have contacts, which is once again the standard Android one. You have files, standard Android file viewer. So there's a lot of very standard Android apps. You have the gallery, which I believe is the standard lineage OS one. And here's where things start to get interesting. You have an email program. Now what this is is essentially it's a fork of K9 Mail, which is a very nice and quite popular open source mail program on Android. Except it's forked to be more usable, which that it is, which unfortunately I can't show you that because of course that would require me putting in my email and stuff. Uh, moving along we have another app that I obviously can't show you and this is one of the more controversial apps that uh, he comes with. It's a map program called Magic Earth uh, Maps I believe. Um, and this is one of the only programs in E that is actually proprietary by default. This is not open source, the map app. Now I can see why they've done this. This ROM is supposed to be very user friendly for people who don't really know what they're doing. And most of the open source map offerings aren't that great and do require a bit of fiddling. But if you're like very pro open source, you know, you won't run anything proprietary, maybe that app isn't for you. 
However, I have tried the app. It's very good. Uh, at least as good as Google and Apple Maps. Um, and it's also quite accurate and such, which is nice. Moving on, you get a music program, uh, which standard Lineage OS music program, actually a very good music player. You get a notes program, and this is slightly annoying. You can't have offline notes, you have to register with um, Ease Online account type thing, which I genuinely don't see why. That's incredibly annoying because I don't want to sign up for that. Um, but I suppose if you plan to sign up to their services, well, then it's not going to be that big of an issue. You've got a sound recorder, which will record the screen as well. Um, for anyone curious, the, this video is not made with that screen recorder. I'm actually doing all this through my computer. Uh, moving on, you have the settings app, which um, if we kind of scroll through, what you can see is, it, as you can see through the storage usage, it's very lightweight. The ROM does not use that much RAM, uh, which is great. As you can see, it's very smooth, very lightweight. You've got your location stuff, which location works very well on this ROM. You have Open Keychain, which is nifty. And one of the cooler features of this ROM is you get Micro G by default. Now, for those of you that don't know what Micro G is, basically what it is, is it's a kind of replacement for Google's own mobile framework and services. So essentially, if an app that you get from the App Store requires, you know, the Google services, uh, Micro-G will kind of pretend to be those Google services and the app will work perfectly. Also, there's two location backends, which is good to have. Um, for example, I tried to install WhatsApp a while ago on the eROM and it works perfectly, even though it um, theoretically should require the Google framework. So this is a good replacement for the OpenG apps. Uh, moving forward, you get a Tasks app, which I believe is based off OpenTask, which is a open source tasks program. And I will say, not enough ROMs come with that sort of thing. And uh, moving forward, you get a Weather app, which is based off Good Weather, which is a very good weather app. Um, and it's fairly accurate, which I don't know how accurate this is, because I've not set it up to use my location, but there you go. Uh, moving forward, you get your standard dialer, obviously, and I think this is just the stock Android one. You get a text messaging program, which this one is interesting because it's very customizable, as you can see. You can change the theme, you can change, you know, night mode, which basically makes it dark, you can change your font size. You can customize pretty much anything you want, and this is actually based off QK SMS, which is one of the best um, messaging programs on Android, in my opinion. And if you need one, I would absolutely get this one. Uh, moving forward, you get a browser, which um, what this is essentially is it's kind of um, E's own fork of Chromium. And it's very much um, based off, you know, Chromium and as you can see, Bromite. So it's going to be very sort of privacy respecting, freedom respecting. It's going to be completely de-googled, which is nice, and you get an ad blocker by default, which is, um, you know, not a, a lot of people aren't going to like that, but it is good for privacy. Uh, also, curiously, the default search engine is E's own search engine. As I say, they have quite a lot of their own online services. Personally, I would have rather DuckDuckGo, but it is what it is. And finally, we get a camera app. Now, what this is if it will open. There we go. As you can see, that's my desk. This is Open Camera. And Open Camera is by far leagues and bounds ahead of uh, any other Android camera. It's very good, you know, you can customize whatever you want. It's completely open source. Very good camera app to have by default. And yeah, that's pretty much it that's what you get by default in the eROM. It's um, not super bloated, but what I will say is where a lot of Android ROMs fail, this thing definitely succeeds. It's not too bloated, but you get all the programs that you're likely to want, need, and use. So, and it's, you know, it's in a very nice premium looking package. So uh, all in all, if you're looking for a uh, custom ROM for your Android device and want something privacy respecting but very easy to get set up, well, I would definitely point you in the direction of the E website. 
and uh, you should probably grab this. I w however, I will say I will put a link in the description because it's actually a bit of a pain to get onto the website because their name is actually a with um, you know slashes, which of course is very difficult to access with a web browser, which is quite annoying. But I believe they are working on the name, so that's always nice. And yeah, all in all, that's pretty much what I have to say about this ROM. I thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.